Hey everyone, Couch Investor back to another video for today. So let's talk about Ginkgo Bioworks. Their stock soared 24% on Tuesday. Of course, the whole market was green, but this stock specifically soared more than the others, 24% on the news of the partnership with Google and Google Cloud to leverage their AI to further grow their business, make it more streamlined, etc., etc., We're gonna talk about that announcement in this video. Now, most of you know this company through Palantir. Palantir invested a bit in that company. They partner up with that company as well. And their CTO is now part of the board. Now, another person that is very involved in, well, involved, interested in that company is Cathie Wood, ARK Invest. And if we look at their holdings here, you can clearly see that throughout the quarters and years, let's say, they have been increasing their shares while their stock has crashed significantly. Right now, it is the 16th largest position across all funds, so combined. Their average cost here is close to $10. Right now, the stock is closer to $2. So again, one of those horrible stocks to hold, but they believe that in the future this could become a significant company and maybe it can, maybe it won't, I don't know, they're dealing with some, some areas that in my opinion can be seen as humans trying to play God, which if we look at books, movies, etc, etc, every time we try to do so, I mean I'll just give an example, Jurassic Park, right? It didn't work out quite well. Now on the flip side, for those that think that this is just a scam, this is another SPAC scam, etc., etc., well, these are the companies that are actually working with Ginkgo Bioworks. So you have pretty huge companies from pharma, industrial biology, and agriculture, all of them from startups to large companies that are working with this one. I think they know a bit better than most. Now for those that don't know what this company does, they basically focus on synthetic biology. They build platforms to program cells in a way that we're familiar to programming computers. That's a very, very basic explanation of what this company does. So you might ask, what did they develop already? Well, a couple of things, flavors and fragrances, vaccines. So they've partnered up with Moderna to optimize the production of the COVID-19 vaccines biosecurity, they're developing tools to help detect and prevent the spread of bioweapons and materials as well. So Ginkgo is working on developing new materials such as plastics and textiles that are made from renewable resources. And yes, if you go on their website, there's going to be a lot of sustainability things, a lot of World Economic Forum type of agenda. Do with that what you want. Now, talking about their financials, right now, this is, in my opinion, in my eyes, a bet. A bet that this company will generate a tremendous amount of revenue and profits in the future because currently, things aren't looking as rosy as you would think. If you look at revenue, cell engineering, only up 2% year over year, biosecurity down 65%, so total revenue is down 44%. They did beat on the estimate, $81 million, they did beat on that but all the rest, it's far from profitable. Again, this is a bet on a good future. Now, the outlook did disappoint, especially when you look at cell engineering. They expect between 145 and $160 million. I believe the expectations were closer to $175 million. So again, there's still a long road ahead. If you believe in that, then maybe now at $2 down significant from their highs might be worth for you. But I'll repeat, this is a company that deals with certain things that not a lot of people would agree with. Now, I do want to show that some things are going into the right direction. For example, new programs increased 62%, current active programs increased 44%, and you can see that the biggest ones here are pharma and biotech, food and agriculture. Then total active customers also increased quite a lot year over year, 75%. So you're seeing growth here across the board, but not when it comes to revenue generating or profit generating right now. We've seen this with Palantir as well, right? We see customers increase, but the effect of those deals, those partnerships will only be visible in a couple of quarters, if not years. And the same could be said here. Now, what does the market think? Well, the market expects sales to be down 44% in fiscal year 2023. 
but big reacceleration in the next two years. So fiscal year 2024, 37.8% growth, and fiscal year 2025, close to 50% growth. When you look at EPS, it's still going to be unprofitable for quite a while. So if you want to look at EBITDA, for example, you can see in fiscal year 2025, we're getting pretty close to break even. Now, let's talk about the partnership, the announcement that made this stock soar 24%. So Ginkgo Bioworks and Google Cloud partner to build next generation AI platform for biological engineering and biosecurity. So they give us here a couple of points, LLMs for biological engineering. So they plan to leverage Google Cloud's Vertex AI platform and Ginkgo's expansive code base to build and train novel foundation and task specific models for core biological engineering challenges. Next, advanced infrastructure, Ginkgo's commitment to utilize Google Cloud's platform will give Ginkgo strategic access to Google Cloud's next generation compute infrastructure, which is important because the CEO actually mentioned three points, I believe that was during the World Economic Forum speech. So he talked about lab automation and how they are now able to produce lots of data on how biology works. Then you have CRISPR, which gives you control as to where you want to insert DNA. And then of course there is genomics, which lets you read, learn and develop new products. Then there is of course the generative AI enterprise search with a vast and growing code base of labeled and unlabeled data Ginkgo seeks immense potential in piloting tools like Google Cloud's enterprise search technology to better identify useful and relevant data from prior experimentation and academic literature when launching new products. Of course, we know that a lot of companies have tons of data, but sometimes there is a lot of bad data, a lot of good data, and you have to find ways to filter through all of that. In the past, it has been very, very difficult, now, with companies like Palantir, Google, etc., etc., they are trying to make it much easier. Again, it's about making sure that the human has an easier time to identify good data through the use of AI applications. Then the last two here is development of improved central data repositories. So given Ginkgo's breadth and scale, Ginkgo measures and retains a much broader and more comprehensive set of data that is typical for biotech companies, which are traditionally siloed within a specific therapeutic area. The last thing here is public data aggregation and exchange. So while Ginkgo will maintain its proprietary database, there is significant need for better public databases and tools, whether it's working with the government or other companies. Now, of course, some might view this partnership as just, okay, good news, stock was beating down heavily, we had a green day, so now the stock is up heavily just on the news, won't really change that much for the company, which I can understand, because they can partner up with the best of the best, but if the execution is lacking, nothing will change. And I agree, good news that pumped up the stock a little bit. Now, on the other side, this could be a good catalyst, meaning validation that this company is legit, the work that they're doing is legit, what they're doing now will just accelerate, which means high increase in revenue and maybe it will become more profitable or become profitable earlier than expected. Right now, for me, I'll repeat, this is a bet. It's a bet on a company that is doing something very, very specifically. Maybe some might view this again as unethical, trying to play God, and so high risk, but with high risk comes high reward if it works out. Of course, do share your thoughts down in the comments below. If you enjoy this type of videos, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.